Rocky Road. I really don't know. Got the goods. Confessions. So many people are secretly dating someone. Sis. Hello friends, welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna be having a bit of like a slumber party, sleepover vibes. I just wanted to hang out with you guys and this sounded really fun to me. So, I remember a few years ago on YouTube, a few people used to do series like these where they would kind of like sit in their pajamas and just like do a little slumber party kind of thing. And I was like, you know what? I wanna bring it back. I don't really know why people ever stopped doing those videos. They were always so fun to me, so. Here we are again. I just wanted to do a video where it felt like I was hanging out with my friends because you guys are literally my friends. I talk to you all the time, every day on my Instagram, through my comments, everything. And so I was like, you know what? Let's have a girls night. So that's what we're gonna do. I do have some plans. I thought maybe we could go shopping and grab some groceries to make some snacks together. And then I thought we could do a little pamper night, maybe some face masks. I got you guys to send in some confessions so we can kind of read your confessions and like a little advice column, which we'll get to later. And I thought we could finish off the night with a bit of a movie night. So I am really excited to just hang out with you. So grab your pajamas grab some snacks and I hope you guys enjoy hanging out with me tonight. But we do have to start off with some snacks and I thought what better sleepover snack than Rocky Road. I have never made Rocky Road before. Liam's aunt makes the best Rocky Road ever. She made it for our wedding favors for all of our guests and it was so good. But surely it can't be that hard. I mean, I don't think I'll get to the level of Liam's auntie because she just she just does a phenomenal job, but surely we can make something that's somewhat similar. And I'm assuming it can't be that hard to make Rocky Road. From what I've gathered, it's just chocolate and a bunch of other random ingredients that you think will sound good. So I've written a list, but we need to go shopping and get our ingredients. So let's go. All right guys, we need to decide what we're gonna put in this thing. We definitely need chocolate. I think I'm just gonna grab one of these. I've seen people use these and they look so cute, but I don't think I'll do that. Also TikTok biscuits, yum. I kind of want to do something like this, like some sort of wafer, because I've seen those look really cool. These are some of my favorite lollies, because they have that thing in them. I definitely want some kind of gummy, but I'm not exactly sure which one. Okay, so for marshmallows, do I go these ones, which look really cute? I haven't tried them, so I don't know if they taste good, or do I just go classic? I really don't know. I kind of want to try these. They just look really fun. All right, guys, got the goods. I'm honestly really excited. I feel like you could really add anything you want to Rocky Road and just kind of switch it up to make it exactly what you want. I feel like when I was in the lolly aisle, I thought of so many different things you could do. There is this lady on TikTok who does so many Rocky Roads. I'll try and link her TikTok down below. I think you can do that, surely. But she definitely gave me heaps of inspo for what I'm gonna do. I got a few ingredients that she's used in some of her Rocky Roads, but she does like pink ones and she's made blue ones and galaxy ones and rainbow ones. And it's really cool. Mine is gonna be pretty classic because I just wanted to make something that I'll actually eat and I feel like if they're all funky colors and stuff that won't really look very appealing to me but just do whatever you want and I feel like this would be such a fun thing to make with friends. You know how people do those like cocktail competitions where each person makes a cocktail and you all try them and rate them and stuff? That could be a really fun idea with like desserts or snacks or something in a sleepover or Rocky Road. You could all make a different Rocky Road and do all different themes and stuff. That could be such a fun thing to do but I'm gonna stop talking and when we get home I'll show you guys which ingredients I decided to pick up. I literally hopped out of my jeans as soon as I got home. These are just little back shorts that match my shirt. They're both from White Fox if you're wondering. But let me show you guys what I picked up. So of course we have to have some dairy milk chocolate. This is like the foundation of it all. As for the marshmallows, these are the ones that I went with. The little pastel swirly ones. When I got home Liam saw these and he was like, um, yum. So I won't be surprised if they all go missing. When Liam's auntie made us the favors for our wedding, the Rocky Road favors, she put scotch finger in them and it was just like the perfect crunch to add. I know a lot of people cut up sugar cookies and stuff and put them in, but I was like, this is definitely the go. So I got some of those. To add a little bit of like jelliness, like gummy, I ended up getting these because they are my favorite and I just feel like the color is really pretty as well. And then I ended up getting these. I just thought these would make a fun like layering situation. Again, I've seen the lady on TikTok 
use, well not these exact ones, but like the square versions of these and she'll add them like as a layer between the chocolate layers and it looks so good. So I don't have an exact plan of what I'm doing, but I think I do want to layer it. So I think I want to do like a chocolate layer with something in it and then like a wafer layer and then another chocolate layer. I think that's the plan. So let's get straight into it. This is the little container that I'm going to be using. It's just from Kmart. It's just one of their like bamboo lid ones, but don't really need the lid for this so I'm just gonna line this with baking paper and then I might do some little ASMR while I chop up some of these ingredients that kind of sounds fun Saw the city passing by my window Was in the crowd but I felt so alone Looked at my phone like every other second My future was blurry and numb A tunnel where there's no light Oh but then you came and sat right next to me Your eyes they glowed and filled me guys this is the finished product i'm gonna put this in the fridge and let it harden and we'll cut into it and try it later but oh my gosh <laughs> i just sprinkled some crumbs and stuff over the top as well i'm really looking forward to this Alrighty, friends i went and had a shower i took off my makeup my hair's up in a little claw clip i'm in a little matching pajama set and i am going to cut up that rocky road i'm so excited to see what it looks like in the middle so let's have another little asmr moment as we cut through that and that can be our snack for later i don't know how easy this is going to be to cut because it's straight out of the fridge but i don't really know what the best way to do this is wasn't very smooth but are we ready so you can see the wafer through it and obviously all the stuff at the bottom oh, something's missing <laughs> that looks incredible I'm gonna cut this up into smaller pieces now though guys look how cool this piece looks with the pink wafer I feel like it looks so bright and colorful so fun we've now moved on to the little pamper portion of our night so I just actually made up a face mask I don't know if I can show you it looks like actual mud it is the butt naked rose mask so this is what it looks like it's like in powder form and then you just mix it with some water to make mud apparently and so I thought it would be fun if we do a face mask together. I also lit some candles to make it feel kind of luxurious, but I feel like that kind of just looks like I'm setting the mood or something. But anyway, I also mentioned before, but I've got my matching PJs on. These are actually like my wedding pajamas, like the ones that I got for my bridesmaids and I, for all of us to match. And I'm wearing fuzzy socks. So we're really going all out here, but I asked you guys to send in some confessions and also some advice questions. So I thought those would be fun to go through. I love it when you guys send in confessions. I only have this tiny little brush to apply this face mask because I don't really have anything else. Surely it'll be fine. Now I'm gonna react to some of your confessions. I always ask for this kind of stuff. I'm so scared this is gonna drip everywhere. Um, I always ask for this kind of stuff on my Instagram. So if you don't follow me on there, it's just Rachel Catherine with two R's at the beginning. This actually feels so nice already. And I can only keep this on for 10 minutes. So I need to make sure we pay attention to that. I don't really do face masks very often. I kind of want to get into it because it looks really fun. Let's have a look at some of these confessions. The first one is, I met my boyfriend on Tinder, but my strict parents 
think I met him through mutual friends. Guys, this confession I got so much of and I also know so many people in real life who pretend that they didn't meet on a dating app when they actually did. Like I feel like I know a few people who have told their friends that they met through Tinder or Bumble or whatever they met through but they won't tell their parents because I don't know there must be some sort of like stigma around it but I just think it's so funny. I'm secretly dating my ex's best mate and no one knows. This is another one that I got so many times. So many people are secretly dating someone whether it's like a friend or an ex's friend or a sister's friend or like some something and guys so many of you are just out there keeping secrets and it kind of scares me you really just live in a risky life and i don't know if i could ever do that it sounds scary to have like this big secret and like what's the plan like are you planning on dating long term and like if you are how do you plan on telling people i feel like i have a big clump right above my eyes <laughs> mm, up close and personal because this is definitely my mirror right now. But yeah, like how do you plan on telling people if you plan on dating long term? Oh, I'm dripping. Ah! I have a crush on my brother's best friend, guys. You really just live in dangerous lives. I feel like this just doesn't look as cute as all the Pinterest photos of face masks make it look. <laughs> I have a hidden tattoo that no one except my boyfriend knows I have. I kind of love this. I actually have quite a few friends who have tattoos that their parents don't know about and it is so insane to me. I don't have any tattoos but I don't really know how my parents would react if I had tattoos. They probably wouldn't be like excited about it but they probably wouldn't care too much. I guess it also depends on like what it is, how big it is, all that sort of stuff. But yeah, I have so many friends whose parents don't know that they have tattoos. And I'm just like, you gotta be so careful with that. Like a lot of my friends who have tattoos have it like hidden, but it's somewhere around like their ribs or their chest or something, which is still something that could be shown if you're at the beach or something like that. Like it's not completely hidden, you know what I mean? Guys, I don't, I don't know how you do it. In high school, I made an anonymous Snapchat and posted rumors about everyone. This is a real life gossip girl. I feel like I would be so stressed out if my school had something like this when I was in school. I listened to a podcast called What We Said Podcast. If you guys don't listen to it, you need to because it is so good. But they do these things called story episodes where people will send in stories about a specific topic. Like they've done stories about people's crazy exes. They've done stories about people's worst first dates or like heaps of different things. And I feel like they've had so many people write in and say that they have either made like a gossip girl thing for their school or they have had one at their school that was made by someone else and that just sounds so stressful and it also sounds so stressful to be the person who's behind it and no one knows like what the heck what are you gonna do if people find out i'm so intrigued by this i check my ex-boyfriend's social media pretty much every day and we broke up over two years ago sis we we gotta move on are you doing that because you want to get back together with him or are you doing that just because it's interesting. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm falling hard for my physio. That's a new one. I feel like I've seen so many best friends, sisters, brothers, all that sort of stuff, but physio, interesting. I've liked my crush since March 2019, so that's two years. He now has a girlfriend. Should I confess or keep it to myself? I honestly think you should keep it to yourself if I'm being completely honest. You do not want to be labeled as a homewrecker. And if he is truly your person, you will end up together. So when he does eventually end it with his girlfriend, if they are not the right people for each other, then I would say that would be the time to admit your feelings, but not while he's with someone else. Because imagine if you are with someone, like you're dating someone and you think they're the love of your life. And then like someone came up to your boyfriend and was like, I'm in love with you. Like, wouldn't you be so hurt? And like, wouldn't it cause so much tension in your relationship or it could i guess it depends how your boyfriend or partner handles it but i would just say keep it to yourself for now wait it out and if it's meant to be it will be i stalk my ex on snap maps too often i don't know why so many people have their snap maps turned on i feel like i would not want people to know where i am all the time just like random people on my snapchat why are we sharing our location with so many people my brother made me angry so i put his toothbrush in the toilet no that is disgusting Disgusting. I don't even know like what <laughs> that is awful. That is so bad, but it's kind of funny but it's also awful. Okay guys, it has been 10 minutes, so I'm gonna wash this off, but we're gonna come back because I have a lot of advice questions to go through, so we're gonna do that, but BRB. Face is freshly washed. I feel like I'm glowing. We love to see it. Now I'm gonna move on to some advice questions. I asked you guys to send them to me on Instagram again, but I also let people send them through DMs if they had a bit of a longer question.
question. And I also just want to say, I'm obviously giving advice just from my own experience, from my own perspective. I am not saying that I have the best advice in the world. I just thought this would be a bit of a fun segment to have. And I want it to feel like you're talking to your best friends and you ask them for advice on something. But please don't take my advice too seriously. Make your own decisions based on what you think is the right thing to do. I was about to be like, I am not qualified for this, but I'm like, I do have a psychology degree, but I still am not qualified for this. <laughs> advice are having no idea what to do career wise. This is such a hard question because people expect you to know exactly what you want to do when you're like 17 or 18 years old and you finish high school and you're just like thrown out into the real world and they're like, yep, just figure it out. And I know I speak for many people when I say 17, 18, 19, 25 year olds, 30 year olds, 35 year olds still might not know what they want to do at that age. And I think the best advice that I can give you is just do whatever you think you will love and whatever you can see yourself happy doing. And the other piece of advice that I have for you that is just as important as the first thing that I said is it is okay to change your mind. If you've been following me for a while, you guys know I have a psychology degree and now I work full time doing YouTube. Obviously did not need a psychology degree to be in the career that I'm doing, but I did that degree and I changed my mind and I started doing a totally different career and I am so happy that I changed my mind and I stepped out and just like did something different. Even though it is not what people expected from me or it is not what I thought was like the idea of success when I was in school. I didn't even think this was a possibility when I was in school or when I was graduating. But I don't know why people feel guilty about changing their mind about what job they wanna do. It is very normal in our society, in our generation, to have multiple careers over our lifetime. I'm pretty sure the average is like, we'll have like seven jobs and like three career changes or something like that in our lifespan. So as another example, I spent a year working in a primary school as a teacher aide and I actually really loved that job, but I also had my heart in social media and I really wanted to pursue that as well. And I loved both. Like I could see myself being happy doing both, but I just decided that I changed my mind. I wanted to try something new. I wanted to take the opportunities that were given to me. So obviously now I'm doing social media. Does that mean that I will never return to the education like side of things I don't know who knows maybe when I am 25 maybe when I'm 40 maybe when I'm 60 I'll decide to go back to uni and become a teacher and work in education or maybe I'll get to 30 and decide I want to start my own business like who knows what the future holds but the idea of thinking that you have to stay in the same thing forever is so unrealistic we are people we grow we change and it is normal to change your mind and change your interests I think do a job or study a degree that you think you will love and that you can see yourself being happy and loving going to work every day. But if you start that degree and you hate it, change. If you start a job and you hate it, change. If you start a job and you love it and five years into it you decide you don't love it anymore, change. We are not held down by what we do. You can always change your mind. How do you stay productive and motivated? Honestly, this week I have felt so unmotivated. I have felt like I don't really want to do anything. Work, even though I love doing what I do, has just seemed like a huge effort this week. And I don't really know why that's the case because I don't always feel like this. And I would say generally, I'm a pretty motivated, I'm a pretty productive person just naturally. And I still have times where I just feel a bit off, where I just don't feel like I have a lot of energy, motivation, all that sort of stuff. So first of all, I think it's normal to have periods of time in your life where you just don't feel super motivated and excited. And I think that's okay. And you just have to kind of be patient with yourself during those times and just do the best you can. That is like my best advice during those periods do the best you can. However, if you're someone who just feels like you're constantly not motivated, not productive, anything like that, I would say my biggest tips are if you enjoy reading, read productivity and like business and kind of like self-improvement books. I feel like those motivate me so much. I was actually just thinking that today. I was like, oh my gosh, I really need to read another like productivity kind of book because I'm just feeling kind of unmotivated and those always make me feel way more motivated. Kind of similar to that, listen to podcasts by people who are just really motivated, excited, business people, successful people. I feel like those always really make me feel motivated. If you're unmotivated because you're burnt out, take a break, go on a holiday if you can, just take a few days off so that you feel refreshed. That's a big thing as well. And I actually did do a whole video about my five productivity tips that changed my life. So I'll link that down below if you want more productivity tips because that is really in depth and it goes through a bunch of things that I do like every single day that help me stay way more productive than I ever was before learning those tips. How to get your guy to propose to you without being obvious. 
Okay, this might be a little controversial, and I'm not trying to offend anyone, and you can have your own opinions on this, obviously, this is just my opinion. But if you are trying to convince someone to marry you, or like to propose to you, maybe stop. For me personally, I would never want someone to propose to me or ask me to marry them if they were not ready to ask me. I would never want someone to do that because they felt like forced or because they felt pressured. And in my opinion, you only want someone to propose to you if they really want to and if they are ready. And if they haven't proposed yet, maybe they're just not ready for that. I don't think there's anything wrong with having a conversation with your partner and kind of saying, hey, I just want to say that I think I am ready to get engaged soon. Where are you at? And kind of finding out what sort of timeline they are on because they might come back and say, yeah, I'm ready to get engaged soon. I reckon in the next six months to a year, we can look at getting engaged or something. Or they might say, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> if they say they're not ready, then that is another conversation you can have. You can kind of ask them, what's holding you back? Why are you not ready? And maybe there are some underlying issues that you can work out. Maybe they don't feel like you've been dating long enough. Maybe they aren't financially ready. Maybe they just haven't even thought about that as like a next step. So that conversation can really help them understand where you're at. But I just don't think that like, telling someone to propose to you or like hinting at it and putting pressure on them is the right way to do it because then I think you'll always have that thought in the back of your mind that they only proposed because like you wanted them to and not because they wanted to. Marriage is a huge decision and you do not want to get to that place when one of you is ready and one of you is not. So that's my opinion on it. And if you have a different opinion, that's totally fine. When you wanna pursue value in God, but your partner does not. This is a really hard thing to deal with. If you're in a relationship with someone and you are pursuing God and they don't want to, something that I think you have to really consider when you're in a relationship with someone is your core values. I think that people can be together if they have different interests, different hobbies. If you look at Liam and I's interests and hobbies, they're completely different. My hobbies include things like craft and YouTube and being on camera and I love taking photos and whatever. And he is really mathematical. He loves watching football games. I do not I do not understand the rules of football games. He really enjoys reading theology books. It's not really what I'm into. We have very different interests, but our core values are the same. So our core values being our faith and the way that we kind of want to pursue careers and even though those careers are very different, like the kind of the work ethic behind that, all of our core values are the same. And I think that with faith, it is a core value. Um, and if your faith is not the same as your partner's, that is really, really hard. And I think that's something that you need to deeply consider in your relationship, whether it's worth pursuing. Like for example, if you don't want to have kids and your partner does, that is like a value, like that's a core value of like how you see family and how you see your future. That is going to be a problem that you constantly face throughout the rest of your life unless one of you changes their mind like if you always don't want to have kids and your partner always does one of you is sacrificing one of you is either going to have kids when you don't want to or not have kids when you do want to and that is yeah making someone sacrifice their core value for yours and so I feel like faith is one of the things that you're always going to be sacrificing if your core value is not the same if you see it differently to your partner that is always going to be something that one of you is sacrificing so when you have kids deciding how to bring them up if you want to bring them up in the church or out of the church that's going to be conflict how you spend your Sundays at church or not at church that's going to be conflict um, how you spend your time how you have your relationship all the, like the foundation of your relationship which you want to be on Christ and they don't like there's conflict so I feel like there's just like a difference between hobbies and interests and core values and if your core values are not the same I think you're really signing up for a lot of conflict can it work yes but will it be easy probably not that's my opinion on that. Advice for Christian couples, how do you refrain from temptation and keep Christ as the center? If you have decided that you wanna wait till marriage, my biggest tip is just do not stay at home. <laughs> That is just like the easiest thing I think you can do. So when Liam and I were dating, we were constantly just like going out for walks. We would go to parks. We went on day trips out to like different towns and different cities and stuff. We were always like out doing something. We went out for dinner or we would go for a picnic or we went to museums, we went to planetariums. Like I feel like we just did so many different things, but we basically never were at home. It was very, very rare for us to just be sitting at home like watching a movie or something. And obviously everyone is different, but that is just like the main way why I think it just wasn't that difficult to refrain from that sort of 
temptation because you just don't even put yourself in the position to begin with. As soon as you start taking small steps towards it, it's just going to be way easier to keep going, keep going, keep going. But if you just like don't even put yourself in the position to begin with, it's just not a huge problem in my eyes and in terms of just keeping Christ at the center of your relationship I think one of the best things that I think you can do is definitely be praying for your partner and with your partner and doing bible studies with them that is like one of the best things I think you can do while we were dating and obviously now as well while we're married I prayed for Liam every single day and that's just a way that you can like affirm and encourage and support your partner with God being like the main part of that and then also we did bible studies together and we still do that now as well like we would read through the bible together and we would discuss it and talk about it every week and that was really special we were also part of the same small group at church like we went to the same church and then we went to the same small group in church which is like a bible study that we did with like a group of like six to eight people. I think the thing is, if you're seeking Christ first as individuals, like if Christ is your number one priority as an individual person, if you're both doing that, you're gonna serve God together. So I think that's gotta happen first. You need to be serving God first separately before you can serve God together. But yeah, there are so many ways you can kind of incorporate your relationship with God into your relationship with each other. And I think that's such an important thing as well. But those are all the questions I'm going to answer today. I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me and this little slumber party. I'm gonna go have a movie night, eat my Rocky Road, maybe some popcorn, put on a movie or a documentary or something and just hang out for the rest of the night. So I hope you guys can go and do the same thing and have your own little slumber night, even if you're just by yourself, like me. Again, with those advice questions, obviously I can only answer from my experience and my perspective and my opinions, but do whatever you think is the right thing to do. You know your situations best, you know your life best, and I don't know your life, so I can't make those decisions for you. But I'm gonna go, if you guys haven't subscribed, definitely do that, I upload every Tuesday and Friday. So I will see you guys in a few days. Goodbye.